Okay, uh, it's time already. So let's get started, guys, without any further ado. Before uh, starting, a quick formal introduction on my end. My name is Mohammad Shwab. I'm a cybersecurity trainer. For us. One second, guys, just a second. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry for that. Some background disturbance on my end. So, yeah. A uh, quick uh, restart again. Yeah, my name is Mohammad Shoaib. I'm a cybersecurity trainer from certified from EC Council. And today's demo is on certified ethical hacking version 11. This is a foundational course for people who are completely new to the domain of cybersecurity and who want to want who want to learn cybersecurity from scratch. Okay. So before we get started, uh, this this is a common misconception among students to understand what is hacking and what is ethical hacking. So there are two different terms. Okay, so let's clarify that first. So when we talk about hacking, this is the procedure of trying to gain access to information systems. Okay, now these information systems could be anything. They could be as small as a mobile phone to as big as a web application server or a database. Oh, one second, guys. Uh, there's some issue with the audio device as well. Just uh, troubleshooting that. I hope you can hear me now, though. Right. Okay. So again, as I was mentioning, hacking is a procedure of trying to gain access to information systems. These information systems could be anything, as small as a mobile phone to a web application server or a database. And this gaining access is done without the permission or the consent of the organization owning those systems. Okay, so when, uh, again, all of this is performed just for the hacker's benefit. So once he gets access to the devices, he can steal the data, destroy the data, or sell the data to other third-party vendors. And sometimes hackers are just so mischievous that they even do it just for fun. Okay, now if hacking seems such a malicious task or a criminalistic job, why do we have a course called ethical hacking is the second question. And how could hacking become ethical? Ethical is something which is legal, which is allowed. Okay, how is hacking becoming allowed now? Okay, so if we define ethical hacking on the other hand, this is the procedure of trying to find vulnerabilities. Okay, a vulnerability is a very common term that you'll keep on hearing throughout the course. Okay, so to define it out, a vulnerability is nothing but a weakness, a flaw, or a loophole, you could say, in the information system. Okay, and using these weaknesses only, hackers try to exploit the system. They try to get access to it and they try to attack the systems. So your job in ethical hacking is to find these vulnerabilities in the information systems with the consent and with the permission of the organization. Okay, so you, you, uh, you take the permission from them, you work hand in hand by uh, following all the regulations and the policies uh, given by the company. And once you find the vulnerability, you report it back. Okay, so this reporting of vulnerabilities is very important because once you report it, the organization will apply the patches for it. Okay, and once a patch is applied, the vulnerability gets closed. Okay, and there's no more doorway or there's no more paths for the hackers to cause any harm. So with ethical hacking, you're trying to find the vulnerabilities and you're disclosing them to the organization to apply the patches for it. And thereby, with the application of those patches, you're increasing the security of the infrastructure. Okay, so with ethical hacking, you're actually trying to protect the organization rather than cause any harm. I hope these two definitions are clear, guys. What is hacking and what is ethical hacking? Again, important point, if anyone has any queries or any questions, please feel free to interrupt me at any certain point. You can interrupt me via voice or chat, anything. Okay, or at least raise a hand. So any questions or doubts, guys, up to this part? Uh, any issues with my audio? I hope the audio is fine now. I was facing a couple issues earlier. Uh, it's fine. Right, thank you so much for that. Now, proceeding further, depending on these two definitions, guys, we can categorize the different types of hackers as well. Okay, so there's someone known as a black hat hacker. There's someone known as a gray hat hacker. And finally, someone known as a white hat hacker. A black hat hacker in simple terms can also be called as a cyber criminal. Okay, so he's someone who performs hacking for his own benefit, okay, or just for fun, without asking for consent. 
on the other end of the spectrum we have someone known as a white hat hacker white hat hackers are also commonly called as penetration testers or ethical hackers these are the people who work hand in hand with the organization abide by all the laws and policies set by them and find vulnerabilities in the organization and once they find them they report it back as well so that they can apply the patches for it so they are increasing the security okay now in between there's a another area where someone known as gray hat hackers fall these people are commonly called as bug bounty hunters and the reason why they call them bug bounty hunters is that they have both the qualities of black hat and white hat hackers like a black hat hacker they don't ask for permission before trying to find one of these okay but once they do like a white hat hacker they report it back but there is a minor catch over here okay they don't report the vulnerabilities for free okay they report it in exchange of a bounty a bounty is something which benefits them for finding the vulnerability okay so that vulnerability could be disclosed by the hacker or by the ethical hacker gray hat hackers okay for a bounty which is like financial reward or a reputational reward for them. okay now all these three types of hackers whether it be black hat hackers or gray hat hackers or white hat hackers they perform hacking or ethical hacking in a certain step in a certain procedure and these steps collectively are called as hacking cycle or cyber kill chain oh someone seems to be drawing on the screen one second let me remove that permission guys does anyone have any questions someone was annotating on the screen someone was trying to draw something on the screen okay assuming there's no questions now uh, as i've mentioned all the three types of hackers perform hacking or ethical hacking in a certain fashion they follow step of a certain step of procedures and those procedures are collectively called as hacking cycle or cyber kill chain now let me discuss each of i briefly list out these steps one by one and then we'll discuss them as well so that you have a better idea of what the whole course consists of so the first step in hacking cycle or cyber kill chain is information gathering sometimes it can also be referred to as reconnaissance or footprinting second step is known as scanning it can also be referred to as enumeration okay third step is gaining access fourth step is maintaining access and the last step is reporting or clearing traces okay now again let me briefly discuss about each of these steps one by one so first step information gathering again as the name says to this this step is where hackers or ethical hackers try to gather as much information as possible about the target and this information is gained passively what i mean by passively is that this information is obtained from other third party sources without the target organization knowing about it okay so for example if this wipro.com as our target we try to gather information about wipro.com from the other sources on internet without wipro.com having a, any any clue about it okay now the main question that usually students are ask is so what kind of information are we talking about over here what what kind of information are we trying to gather here and this is the information as follows okay so we try to get information such as the ip addresses or the range of ip addresses that are used by the organization the who is records understanding who is hosting the website when was it hosted uh, when will it expire when was it last updated then the dns records understanding what the dns server of that organization what information does it contain the employee details such as the contact numbers the email <coughs> email addresses uh, publicly disclosed uh, usernames and passwords of the employees then the domain names and the subdomains of the organization and then the operating system information like what os are they using on their servers now believe it or not all this information is readily available on the internet to be gathered is that said you need to know those gold mines from where you can fetch this information if i show you a very basic example let us say if i wanted to find the dns information for any certain organization all i have to do is go to the browser and search for a website called dns dumpster a very popular website in the cyber security domain click on the first link
there. Hello, guys, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Right. With the Zoom yes. server, I'm getting disconnected a time and again. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience caused. Uh, let me do one thing. Uh, just in case, guys, if there's too many interruptions, we can do the same demo session tomorrow as well at 8 p.m. Okay, but we'll still continue. Let's see how uh, far this goes. Okay, because I'm not sure if there's some issue with the Zoom server. Okay, or I'm um, even not sure if it is up from my own ISP's end. Okay, but still, let's try to continue. Let's try to take it up. Okay, I'll try to complete the session. But just in case if uh, it doesn't, uh, I mean, hello? Again, I, I guess I seem to have lost my audio again. <laughs> Uh, if we can hear you now, you, you can, can hear, hear me. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Let's let's try to take uh, let's try to continue the session. But just in case, if I lose a kind of communication again, if if there's loss in audio, or if you're unable to hear me properly, please join back tomorrow at 8 p.m. as well, guys. Okay. I'll just try to change my uh, network and I try to take it from a different location. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, information gathering is nothing but trying to gather as much information as possible about the target. And I wanted to show an example actually. So let me go for this website called DNS Dumpster. Now I'll click on the first link. Again, a very popular website in the cybersecurity domain. This gives you the DNS records or stored in the DNS server of any organization. So if I search for an organization like Wipro.com and if I click on search, Let's wait for a moment. And as you can see, if I scroll down a bit, this starts showing me firstly, the geolocation of DNS servers for Wipro's organization. Scroll down much further, it gives us the exact host names and the IP addresses for the DNS servers of Wipro. Okay, so these IP addresses are very important from a hacker or an ethical hacker's perspective because these act as the entry points for where attacks need to be initiated. So it tells us that Wipro has one primary DNS server and three other secondary DNS servers, okay? So, and their exact public IPs as well. Scroll down much further, it gives us the MX record. MX in the sense, it tells us what mail server are they using. So they're using outlook.com for the mail server, and this is the exact IP for their mail server. Scroll down much further, it gives us the host records. Host records in the sense, whatever domains or whatever subdomains are there for Wipro, it tells us what servers they're using, what operating system are they using, Apache in the sense, it's a Linux server, okay? And their exact public IPs as well, okay? So these are all the domains and the subdomains of Wipro. And each of these IP addresses is an entry point. The more entry points you find, the more attack vectors or possible methods you find to attack the target system, okay? So scroll down much further. Again, a very informative page gives us the complete network topology of Wipro's organization what servers are connected and how are they connected to one another. Now, usually a question that arises from students is, sir, is this information legal uh, or is it illegal? No, this information is completely legal. It is given out by Wipro itself, but not in one single location. DNS dumpster does the job of fetching this information from various sources and putting it in one single location. Okay, This information needs to be given out by Wipro so that their clients can connect to those servers. This is publicly available information which is mandatory to be openly open, uh, visible as such, okay? But the giving out information is not the vulnerability over here. Not checking if the information given out, if any of these servers has weaknesses, is the wrong thing to do, okay? So whatever information is being given out, it needs to be seen by Wipro that each of these servers is completely proofed against vulnerabilities, okay? So that is where cybersecurity comes into the play, okay? Where you're checking whichever output, uh, I mean, the attack vectors you're showing on the internet, each of these needs to be completely secure from vulnerabilities one by one. Okay. Now, and this is one of the sources which I've shown DNS dumpster. There's tons and tons of other websites as well to get such extra information. Now, once this information is gathered, then you go with the next phase, which is scanning. Okay. Scanning can also be called as enumeration. And the main objective of scanning is to try to gather some extra information about the target, which we could not get from the passive method. In this scanning phase, you make active connections with the target. You directly contact the servers of the target organization and you get some extra information. Now, to categorize scanning, there's three important types of scanning. There's something called as network scanning, port scanning, 
and vulnerability scan. In network scanning, we try to figure out on the target organization network, what are devices are active or what servers are active. So in a, in a company or in an organization, you have multiple services running. You have DNS servers, you have DHCP servers, you have SNMP servers, SMTP servers, FTP servers, whatnot. Okay, so you practically try to figure out what devices, what firewalls, what uh, security devices like IDS, IPS, what all devices are they using? So that is network scanning, trying to figure out in a target organization, what all components exist. Okay, now once you know, like so-and-so devices are active in an organization, on those devices, you perform port scanning. Port scanning is where you try to figure out on each system what ports are open and what services are running on those ports. Okay. Every system has logical and physical ports. In the logical ports, which range from 0 to 65535, you need to figure out which ports are open and on those ports, what services are running. Okay. Once you know the services are running, finally you perform vulnerability scanning to figure out if any of those services, if any of those ports has a vulnerability on which you can attack. Okay, and through which you can get access to the specific component, a specific device in the organization. So during this phase, we'll be using a very important tool called Nessus. So if you so you want to download Nessus, you can go to this website called Enable Nessus. Again, a very important tool. This is used in real-time scenarios in organizations. Okay, and quite expensive as well. So if you click on buy, you can see it's around four thousand dollars, and that too, not even lifetime. This is just a one-year subscription. Okay, now it's a, such a popular tool and such a very expensive tool for a, for its own reason, as I've mentioned, quite great at finding vulnerabilities, for scanning for vulnerabilities in organizations. So I have this is already installed on my system. Let me show you that. Localhost colon 8834. Nessus by default runs on port 8834. Yes, so this is my Nessus panel. So I'll be showing you how to install this Nessus on your system as well. Again, you don't have to pay anything. There's a trial version for this. And this is how this is basically looks like. As you can see, you have multiple scan techniques. So you can perform a network scan, a port scan, a vulnerability scan. Okay. And try to figure out on each device what kind of vulnerabilities exist. Let me show you a scan report as well. So this is basically how a scan looks like. No, not this one. Let me go for something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks fine. So as you can see, I have scanned one of my systems in the network. Okay, basically a Linux system or Ubuntu server. Okay, and this shows me on that system what all vulnerabilities exist. Okay, so it categorizes the vulnerabilities depending on the impact. So there are five impact levels information based, low vulnerability, medium vulnerability, high, and critical. In an organization, no system should ever have a critical, high, or medium vulnerabilities. Okay, low and information based can be uh, of uh, low impact, so you can ignore them for the time being. But medium, high, and critical vulnerabilities give chances for hackers to attack the remote organization and get remote connections or perform DOS attacks. Okay, so this is very important to understand how to scan an organization for vulnerabilities. This is completely automated. You have to do nothing. You have to just set the parameters, set the devices that you want to scan, and this will automatically scan for the latest vulnerabilities. But since it's an automated tool, we can completely never trust the results. We need manual verification as well. Okay, so after the scanning is done, then we go into the next part, which is gaining access. So gaining access is nothing but you manually performing testing, you manually performing penetration testing to check out if the report given by these tools is actually true or if it contains any false positive results. Okay, so gaining access is a huge concept. It covers a vast variety of topics and these are the topics as follows. Okay, so before I continue with this, any questions or doubts guys up to this part? I hope my audio is fine. Are you losing my audio here and there? Any questions or doubts up to this point? Audio is fine. We are not having issues. <clears throat> oh, perfect. Thank God. Right. Uh, any questions or doubts up to this point, guys? Before I proceed further with gaining access. Right. This point, no oh, okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Proceeding with gaining access now. As I've mentioned, there's tons and tons of topics in this. Let's discuss one by one. So the first topic that we'll discuss is system hacking. <clears throat> in system hacking, we try to understand how we can crack or bypass a Windows operating system password. Now, whether that be Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 10 or Windows 11, it doesn't matter. We try to understand if a system is locked, if it is password protected, how do we try to crack that password? Okay, and if it is, uh, if, and if it gets too uh, uh, 
impossible for us to crack it okay if it is not that easy to crack the password and understand what the password is we try to bypass the password without knowing the password we try to get access to the internal operating system files so that is what is system hacking so we'll basically learn if a system is locked how do we crack that password or bypass that password and get access to the internal files so this is very helpful for you in an ethical hacker perspective if you've forgotten the system's password okay now secondly in hackers perspective also we understand okay so how this is the method how we can crack passwords so we learn what preventive measures we can take so that this does not happen with our system okay so in each of these gaining access topics we learn both hackers perspective as well as ethical hackers perspective we learn how to attack we'll also learn how to defend our system if we are on the other end okay after system hacking we have malware attacks malware is nothing but malicious software okay when you join those two terms you get the word called malware and again people have a very general misconception that viruses are the only malware that exist but no there's tons and tons of malware guys there's viruses worms trojans spyware rootkit what not okay so we'll practically learn how to create each of these malware and also how to defend our system from these malware okay then there's a bonus concept called malware advanced okay this is just a bonus concept guys not included in the ch curriculum okay from ec council i have just added this so students have a better understanding on how to create malware so in this i'll be sharing the resources of how you can program or create your own malware by using python programming okay after that comes network penetration testing in network penetration testing we learn in a local organization as i've mentioned there's multiple servers there's dns servers dhcp servers ftp servers uh, snmp servers what not so we'll practically learn how to find vulnerabilities on each of these servers someone is asking a question oh okay it's durga soft right so we'll practically learn how to uh, find vulnerabilities on each of these servers and once we find a vulnerability we'll also learn what kind of attacks we can perform in an intranet in a local network so to list out a few this attacks like sniffing attack man in the middle attack or hacking wireless routers cracking the password for wifi routers so all this comes under network pen testing okay and dos attacks denial of service or ddos distributed denial of service so again it might seem a bit technical guys but using these attacks you can shut down servers or you can try to capture the data flowing in a local network you can capture the usernames you can capture the passwords or whatever information that someone tries to access in a local network so all that comes under network penetration testing then we learn social engineering where we learn how hackers create fake login pages so this is a very common practice this is one of the leading cyber threats that happen creating fake accounts or creating fake login pages and getting the passwords or username or password credentials of victims so these are commonly termed as phishing attacks so we'll practice how do hackers perform these phishing attacks and we'll also learn how to detect these phishing pages how to prevent our system from accessing these phishing pages or even if you access a phishing page how do you verify if it is an original page or if it is a fake page okay distinguishing between them okay then after that comes web application penetration testing in this we learn the common vulnerabilities that exist on websites okay to list out a few technically this sql injection cross site scripting broken authentication file upload vulnerability what not okay so these are the vulnerabilities on websites the weaknesses on websites through which hackers get access to the databases in the back end or they can execute malicious scripts on the web page okay or they can try the web server to upload malicious files and get access to the web server in the back end so these are the vulnerabilities through which we can attack websites okay so we'll practically learn each of these vulnerabilities and we'll also learn how to prevent these websites i mean vulnerabilities on these websites so during this phase we'll be using a very important tool called burp suit so if you go to the browser you can search for burp suit as well quite a very popular tool in the web application pen testing field so let me show you over here yes so this is the tool okay so there's a free edition and there's a pro edition as well which costs around uh, $400 or something or $450 but again i have the cracked version for this which i'll be sharing with you and we we'll learn how to run this burp suit we we'll learn how to use this burp suit tool in our classes okay after that uh, then we have vulnerability assessment so this is a very important step as i've mentioned we get the report from a vulnerability scanning tool like nessus but the scan result could contain some false positives as well so we need to manually verify we need to manually check if the report is actually giving correct results or if it is giving false positives okay we try to manually attack the system manually try to penetrate into the system's uh, operating system i mean system security okay and then we check okay so the vulnerability shown by nessus tool is correct or not okay in this phase we'll be using a very important tool called metasploit framework 
Okay, that is a vulnerability assessment tool. You should check or assess each and each and every vulnerability. Okay, then finally comes hacking mobile phones, where we learn how to check the test, uh, how to check the security of an Android system. Okay, so we learn how to create malware for Android phones, remotely attack Android phones, and get remote connections. Okay, these are a few topics. After gaining access, we have two more simpler topics actually, small topics called gaining access. I mean, sorry, maintaining access and reporting or clearing traces. So in maintaining access, we learn how hackers create persistent connections. Okay. So if an attacker uh, hacks a phone or hacks a computer, how does he maintain that connection? Even if the victim restarts the system or shuts it down and starts after a very long time, how do you hackers maintain this connection and download the data is what we learn in maintaining access. After that, finally comes reporting or clearing traces where we'll see how we can generate a report with all the vulnerabilities found or how do we remove the evidences from a hacker's perspective? Okay, so uh, if you're an ethical hacker, you would perform all the five steps, generate a report and submit to the organization. If you're a black hat hacker, a cyber criminal, definitely you're not gonna report it. You try to remove all the evidences generated. So that is clearing cases. Okay, now uh, coming back to the this thing, the course content, one second guys. Mm -mm -mm. Just a moment. Right. I hope the screen is visible now. This is the course content, guys, actually. Okay, the complete course content. I guess the institute might have already shared this with you. If not, I'll be including it in the meeting over here. Okay. So again, as I've mentioned, this course does not require any prerequisites. So if you're completely new to this domain and or if you're even from a non-technical background, this is a very easy course to get started with because the prerequisites are included in the course itself. So we basically have a few prerequisites like networking basics, Linux and Windows commands and virtualization. Okay. So in the networking basics, we learn what basically IP addresses are, what are IPv4 addresses, what are IPv6 addresses, uh, what is DNS protocol, DHCP protocol, subnet mask, uh, default gateway, all these technical terms that you keep coming across in networking, we'll learn all of them. Okay. Then we need to learn a concept called virtualization. Okay, so this is very important because we'll be using a tool called VMware. So if you can observe my desktop over here, I have a tool called VMware over here. This is a virtualization software. Virtualization software in the sense, it allows you to install multiple operating systems on one single machine. As you can see, what I'm running right now is my Windows 11 system over here. On my Windows 11, I have an application like VMware inside which I can run multiple other operating systems like my Windows 7 or my Kali Linux. Okay, the reason why we need this virtualization tool is because as I've mentioned, we need to install an operating system called Kali Linux. Okay, this Kali Linux is what we will predominantly keep using throughout the course. Kali is a operating system which is specifically built for penetration testing and it is open source. Anyone can download it for free from the official website kali.org. Okay, so as you can see over here, the most advanced penetration testing distribution. Okay, so this is an operating system built specifically for performing hacking or ethical hacking. Why specifically? Because this comes pre-installed with all those tools. So if I log into my Kali system, let me show you. Mm -mm -mm. Let me get this in full screen access. Yes, so this is how basically your Kali system looks like, guys. And if you click on this button, you can see over here, this comes pre-installed with all the penetration testing tools for information gathering, for web vulner vulnerability analysis, for web application analysis, for password attack, for Wi-Fi attacks, for sniffing, for uh, reverse engineering, and so on and so These tools are not available for you in your Windows operating system, and they come pre-installed pre in Kali. Hence, we need to understand how to install this OS and run it separately. So to install Kali separately, you don't need a separate machine again. We just need a tool like VMware, inside which we can assign some physical properties of your device virtually to a virtual machine and run it simultaneously, okay? So I can run my Kali simultaneously and a victim machine also like Windows 7. So as you can see, this is my Windows 7 operating system. So this VMware allows you to install multiple operating systems in one singular device, okay? And with that, we have an attacker machine, we have a, a victim machine. So we can create a practical lab environment in our own system. So you can practice this whenever you want, whenever you get your free time, you can practice all the uh, things we learn in the class on your own system itself. 
you don't need an online server or, or anything as such. Okay. Now, once we learn this virtualization, once we learn how to install the Scali Linux and all the other operating systems we require, then we learn basic Linux commands as well. So as I've mentioned, we are installing Kali Linux, which is again a Linux OS, and we need to know how to run a Linux OS. What are the basic commands? What are the basic, what is the difference in the architecture between Linux and Windows? Okay. So that we'll discuss in the Linux and Windows class, command class. After all these classes period which are done, then we dive into the advanced concepts, footprinting, scanning, and so on and so on. There's a few bonus extra concepts as well, such as cryptography, reverse engineering, IoT, cloud security, Splunk. This is a very important tool again. This is a SOC tool actually. Let me show you that also. I'll go to the browser and search for Splunk. As you can see, again, a very important tool actually. Oh yeah, so sorry, Sai. Again, uh, do you want me to repeat something, Sai? If I've uh, skipped a bit. Okay, again, all I was trying to show over here, guys, is we'll be learning Kali Linux. We'll try to un un install this tool in our system. Okay, and then after this is done, we'll learn virtualization as well. Okay, how to install VMware and set up our lab. Okay, we'll learn the Linux commands. After that, in the bonus topics, we we'll learn a tool called Splunk as well. Okay, Splunk is a SIM tool, security, instant, and event management tool. So we we'll learn basics of this as well in the course. This is basically used to understand how you can monitor an organization for alerts and how do you detect those alerts. Okay, so we we'll learn this tool as well. This is quite important as a bonus topic. So yeah, that's that. Uh, coming last, this course is for a duration of thirty-five days. We will have classes from Monday to Friday for one hour, and the batch is at eight p.m. If I'm not wrong, which will be starting in a few days. A couple more demos, guys. I'll be taking the same demo tomorrow as well, tomorrow and on Tuesday and on Wednesday as well, three days. Okay. And from Thursday, probably I'll be starting the first class, which is networking concepts. Okay. Again, so sorry for the interruptions in today's session. Okay. It's some terrible network issue on my end, I guess. But again, I'll take these demo sessions again tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and on Wednesday as well. So if time permits, guys, at 8 p.m., please join the demos again. Okay. We can have a proper, much better session. I'll, I'll give out a few practicals as well if time permits. Okay. I'll show a few practicals as well in the coming demos. Okay. So yeah, if any, if there's any uh, questions, guys, you can ask me your doubts, right? We can have a small Q and A session. Yeah, I have a high sway. So I was, uh, yeah. I'm a backend developer, mainly into the Java web application uh, development and designing as well. So mm -hmm. I, I just want to understand how this course is going to help me out. So I, I have not uh, ever done the security kind of coding, uh, not into that area, I would say. But out of interest, I just joined it. So Please help me understand how this is going to be, you know, helpful for me. Great question. This so since you're in the in uh, web development field, I would recommend you go through this course to understand what kind of attacks can happen on a web application primarily. Okay. So CES is a course which is like a, a kind of a deal like we are a master of none. Uh, what is what is that uh, saying that goes uh, jack of all trades but master of none. So mm -hmm. CH is where you learn all the endpoints. You learn web applications as well. You learn network security as well. You learn mobile security as well. You learn system security as well. Since your field is web application development and all, one of the key concepts we'll discuss is web application security also, web application penetration testing. So we'll cover the basics, like what kind of attacks can be performed on websites, okay? How do you attack the databases? How do you inject SQL queries? How do you inject JavaScript code into a web application and try to execute it? Okay, how do you upload other files, other PHP, malicious PHP files, and get remote connection to the server? So this topic would be of very much interest to you. Okay, and this acts as a foundational course to understand what kind of attacks can happen on all the uh, endpoints. Okay, one of which being web application. But to your much more interest, once this course is done, you can take a much uh, more advanced course called web application penetration testing. Let me show you that course content as well. So if I scroll down. This is a separate course, actually. This is which is usually taken after CH is done. Okay, I take this separately, actually. Okay, but once your courses of CH is done, which covers all the foundational concepts, you can go with this advanced course, which covers all the important vulnerabilities in websites, basically. So there's a framework called OWASP Top 10. This gives out the list of top 10 vulnerabilities that usually exist on websites. Okay, to list out a few, there's SQL injections, cross-site scripting, 
cross red cross side request forgery post header injection attacks or url redirection attacks parameter tampering attacks okay this primarily focuses on web applications only okay so to understand the vulnerabilities in websites okay but to understand these attacks as well you would necessarily need to have to go through ceh first okay because we won't be covering any basics in web application we'll cover all the basics and the attack terminologies and all in ceh so after ceh is done after that if time permits you can go with web application and this could help you to understand the security side of websites or web applications i hope that answers your question so actually we have a separate team who does penetration testing mm -hmm. yeah uh, definitely so okay you so can start can applying after a job in that course, job can i say mm -hmm. i i am at a very beginner level of <clears throat> cyber security understanding or at an intermediate level so if i if i want to post this uh, in my resume what is my level i would say it's a basic one or intermediate you, one after this both these courses are done you can uh, start applying for web web application penetration tester directly okay at least a junior pen tester okay after ceh is done but if you go with web application uh, bug bounty uh, training as well you can start again you can start testing for the advanced vulnerabilities as well okay, you can give web application pen tester or security analyst job roles these are the job roles you can try for and so mm. the the course yeah. will tell me what are those web application vulnerabilities and how to handle them right and how to secure web services will that also be covered again in ceh we'll only be covering the basics of it as i've mentioned we'll not cover all the top 10 vulnerabilities we'll cover only a first few ones like two or three sql injection cross site scripting broken authentication if your primary goal is on web application after ceh is done you can take that at advanced course now okay, this covers all the vulnerabilities that are uh, actually possible on a website it's a very comprehensive uh, course on specifically focusing only on web applications and nothing else okay so it includes the coding coding part. yeah this involves some of javascript coding and html coding as well okay. for this okay now, and uh, so duration is 30 days you said and uh, that is for ch days. only Yeah. Okay. Coming to that, guys. Again, as I've mentioned, CH is for thirty to thirty-five days. We will have a class from Monday to Friday every day for one hour. And again, all these classes will be recorded. You'll be getting the live recording of the sessions. We'll be, we'll be sharing the materials. We'll be sharing the notepad files, the recordings, and everything, all inclusive in the course price. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Becha. You were saying something. Yeah. So, uh, what if we miss any session? Or uh, let's say the festive season is coming, so there might be some. definitely whenever there's a festive uh, occasion we would definitely uh, not take a class on that day okay but just in case if students are missing out on asserts uh, on any other uh, certain issues we would have definitely live recording session which you can access whenever you want we'll be sharing the google drive link so every class we take will be recorded and uploaded to google drive which you you'll be getting a link from the institute to access whenever you want to okay and if there's too many uh, like too many students missing out on a session we usually take backup classes as well on saturday and sunday so just in case if students were uh, again a majority of students were not available we'll take a backup session of such sessions on uh, on the weekends okay and, and what are the charges sir for this course for the ch course uh, richa it's 8000 rupees 8000 inr okay. and the recordings are lifetime availability or Um, yeah they are lifetime access available yeah thanks uh, sir and then i have one question sir uh, am i audible to you <laughs> yeah i can hear you okay no uh, i mean like i am audible to uh, sure boss now Oh, uh, Nagi. Any? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, my question is like, uh, uh, once I complete this course, uh, like the that the course that you had mentioned in the brochure. So, what kind of opportunities I will get uh, in the future in terms of uh, job profiles? Nagi, Nagi. I'm so sorry. I got disconnected in between. Could you please repeat your question? Yeah. Uh, like you had mentioned two to three types of uh, like courses in the brochure. So. uh like what kind of job opportunities uh, 
we will get once when we complete these courses? Great question. So let me just go with the first course. Let's just talk about CEH first and be keeping web application and the optional field. Okay, so once you're done with CEH, just in case uh, if I had to answer that question in a much better way, you can search for this website called jobs.null.co.in. This is a website that I usually recommend to students once the course is done. Okay, this okay. is a job, I mean a website specifically only for jobs in cybersecurity domain. Okay. okay. Null, Null Community is an organization in India and actually worldwide, which focuses only on cybersecurity. Okay. So once you're done with the course with CH, which is completely implemented for people new to the cybersecurity domain, these are the job roles you can apply for network security engineer, security research you know, intern, or business development intern. Okay. Or you can also go for VAPT job roles, vulnerability assessment, VAP tester, VAP assurance lead, or cybersecurity consultant. These are the job roles you can start applying for. Okay. And uh, you had mentioned uh, one SIM tool, uh, Splunk. So yes. are you going to like uh, uh, like only the theoretical part of the tool? No, no, no. We'll, pra we'll cover the uh, practical part. I'll show you how to install this. I'll show you how to run this and how to capture packets and analyze those packets. We won't be going in depth of it because that's a completely different course, Nagesh. Okay. But we learn practically some part of it. Okay. We'll cover the basics of it. Okay, I won't be teaching it theoretically. I'll include some practicals as well. Again, all these concepts which I've covered in the demo session, which I've listed out over here, uh, everything will be covering practical, except the first few introductory concepts, the Linux the commands, networking basics, except other than these two concepts, every other concept is completely practical based. Okay, so the whole course is uh, divided in a 20 40 ratio, you could say. Every day when we take a one hour class, the first 15 to 20 minutes, I'll discuss the theoretical part of it. The remaining 35 to 40 minutes, I'll discuss the practical approach on it. Okay. Okay. So okay. again, the whole course is practically implemented with the times that with the tools that are used in real time scenario. Splunk is one of them. Burpsuit is another one. Wireshark is another one. Nmap is another one. Uh, Nessus is another one. Uh, yeah. So those are a few tools to list out, which you can uh, put in your resume as well. Okay. So okay. yeah, we'll be learning yeah. everything in a real time practice. Yeah. So in, in this Splunk, uh, are you going to uh, teach us about uh, the administration part or the mm -hmm. monitoring part? Monitoring part, actually. Okay. okay. Because that is where your your security part comes into the play. Monitoring okay. for threats. Okay. Yeah. And trying okay. to analyze those threats. Oh. Okay. Thanks. So Thanks. configuring alerts is also something that will be covered? Uh, not in that depth, uh, Richard. I'll show you only more installation and monitoring of threats. Okay, so uh, actually we are using a Splunk in our project and the monitoring right. part I am aware of. So configuring is something that I would like to learn. Okay, I'll basically show you the buckets and all. So I'll show you uh, how to configure uh, Splunk initially in your organization, how to set up the forwarders, how to set up the receivers, okay, how to configure the buckets, okay, capturing the data, okay, and how to analyze those threats if you receive any. Uh, uh, Sridhar, you have raised your hand. Yeah, Nagish, you were saying something. Yeah, uh, so I think the brochure that you had uh, shown us on the screen is not available on the website. So can you please uh, share it uh, with us? I'll share it in the chat box here. It's one second, just a minute. Mm -hmm. Yes, guys, I've shared it in the chat box. You can download it from there. And yeah, if there's anyone who wants to connect separately, if you have, if you have any other further queries, guys, I've mentioned my number in the browser as well. Let me mention the number again. 768-006-9768. Uh, Sridhar, I'll just confirm it as well. If it is for six months access or lifetime. Okay. So yeah, I'll confirm and get back to you with that. Okay. But six months, if you're saying six months, that should be the minimum at least. Okay, so I'll be getting back to you on that, Sridhar, definitely, if the recordings are for a lifetime or if it's for six months only. And the recordings are uploaded on daily basis or after the break? No, 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 on a daily basis itself. After every session is completed, if it's since we're taking it at night time, probably the next morning the class will be uploaded. Because by the time we end the session, it's going to already going to be nine o'clock or so. So by the next morning, you'll get the recording for the previous sessions. HTML, JavaScript coding. 
for this course because it's not necessary for ch when we get in the ch certificate at the kulhakan course you have no requirement for any programming level knowledge okay if you're going for advanced courses like malware analysis or for web application pen testing or source code testing for that you require some some knowledge on language coding knowledge okay. but for ch no requirement for any coding level language okay i hope that clarifies vikas so you can i take it like until unless you want to change your current line or the current profile that you have you should not take the advanced course not anything as such because most of the time students also do the advanced course for something called bug bounty okay that's for a freelancing job so as a side uh, you could say uh side leisure okay there's something called bug bounty bug bounty is nothing but you have websites like hacker one you have websites like bug crowd let me search for this bug crowd and show you this is a bug bounty platform what i basically mean by bug bounty platform is various organizations various companies are clients for this website so if you click on programs you can notice a couple uh, familiar or uh, popular pages okay netflix constant contract shia network then there is lucid motors then there is host creator redox blue jeans network uh, video conferencing app okay so all these people have posted their websites over here finding getting found of vulnerabilities so once you find the vulnerability they will award you depending on the impact of the vulnerability as you can see so you can take up that web application course to as a side hustle as well to perform bug bounty finding vulnerabilities in websites and reporting it back to them as a side result to start earning some extra money okay so this is one more uh, necessity or you could say uh, re reason for web application pen testing you don't need to just do a job with web application pen testing you can do your freelancing as well finding vulnerabilities in websites and reporting it back to them as a side hustle okay freelancing jobs so i'm not reading anything yeah definitely because again cyber security is one good field for people from the non technical backgrounds to get started with okay because you don't have any necessity for programming level long, uh, knowledge you don't need to learn any advanced networking level uh, programs okay so you just need to learn a few tools okay to get started and from there you can build up on cyber security so in today's world cyber security is actually the easiest domain to get started if you're from a network, uh, non technical background So, so if you don't mind, what kind of profile you have currently? What sort of work you do? Yeah, I have been a SOC analyst actually for a company called Black Knights in Hyderabad. So earlier in two thousand from two thousand nineteen to twenty twenty one, I was working as a SOC analyst. Okay, and from then in the meanwhile, I was working also as a tech, uh, lab instructor for a couple institutes in Hyderabad. Since twenty nineteen end, my complete uh, domain has shifted to training itself. So right now I'm into training and certifications in the EC Council department, but earlier I worked as a SOC analyst. Actually, I've been familiar with tools like Splunk, Alien World, and so on. Uh, you said SOC analyst. SOC analyst. Oh, what what exactly is that? Again, same monitoring, monitoring threats, analyzing threats, and signature writing, writing rules to prevent these threats from happening, oh. in, on tools like Splunk and Alien World. So basically, I used SIM tools, a security instant, and even management tools. Okay, like Splunk, which I've mentioned. These tools I used to analyze threats, monitor them, and prevent them from happening. So I used to analyze and I used to write signet. I used to write signatures, rules to prevent these tools, firewall rules. Any section on certificates creation? Uh, Again, I help with certifications as well. Uh, one no, second. No, no, not certification on the security part. The Is certificates that we use for uh, uh, any web service call to secure web services or just to interact between two interfaces. We need certificates, right? So it's so. You're right. talking about SSL certificates, right? Yes, SSL certificates. Okay. Any coverage from that perspective? We won't go in depth, but we learn what cryptography is basically. We learn what types of encryptions are available. What types of cryptography? Uh, what again? Well, let me show back in my. Browser itself over here. There's a topic over here called cryptography, as you can see. Okay, so that is cover. We'll be covering the theoretical part of it. There's nothing practical practical to implement over there. We learn what SSL certificates are. We learn what is asymmetric encryption, uh, symmetric encryption. What is AES, DES, RSA? All that is covered in the cryptography part. 
Is coding necessary for CH and advanced web application pen testing in Java, Python? Again, Sridhar, as I've mentioned, for CEH, you don't require any level of coding language knowledge. Okay. But if you're going for advanced web application pen testing, since web applications run on HTML and JavaScript and CSS, you need to have at least basic knowledge on them. Okay. To understand uh, when you read a JavaScript code, you need to understand where the flaw is. Okay. So for advanced web application pen testing, you would definitely require uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, HTML and JavaScript knowledge. Okay. Um, the number you provide us is not a WhatsApp number. Oh, one second. Did I give a wrong number? One second, guys. Let me just check. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Mohammed uh, Zakir, right? Yeah, Zakir. It is the it's the correct number for WhatsApp itself seven six eight double zero six nine seven six eight. I am available on WhatsApp with that number. Okay, I'm from India, so you would have you might have to add the Indian code, I guess plus nine one, if I'm not wrong. It's a WhatsApp number, guys. Uh, any other questions in the meanwhile? Hello, sir. Am I audible? Uh, Hello? Sai. Sai, right? Hi. Yes, yes. I, can I can hear you. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Sai. Yeah. I'm working as a, a Linux administrator. Okay. Manager. As Richa has already asked, she was working as a Java developer. How would this course be helpful to her career? And uh, how would we, how would uh, it could be climbed in this in the resume? In the, same, in, the, in the same way, I want to ask how this uh, cyber security would help my Linux administration career. Uh, so actually, I was like working for forward side. Again, this is for you, for you to shift your domain to cyber security. In a uh, web application, I could tell you, like you, if you have any vulnerability in websites, you could check for, uh, you could try to understand what those vulnerabilities are. You could try to figure out those vulnerabilities. You could try to prevent those vulnerabilities. But in Linux administration, it's a fixed job. You don't have anything because with web applications, every single day, there's a new technology. There's a new vulnerability. Okay. But with Linux administration, there's not much scope for you to increase over there in system admin or net, net, uh, network admins or Linux administration jobs. So this might not help you that far ahead in your domain. Okay. But you would understand, okay, these are the vulnerabilities that exist in Linux operating systems. So that place you would know, okay, these are the configurations, errors that could exist in Linux systems, which you have to prevent for vulnerabilities to not exist, okay? But not much more helpful over there. If you're planning on shifting your domain from uh, administration to cyber security, this is the go-to course. Okay, thank you, thank you. Right. Uh, again, uh, nothing to demean also, but administration job roles are coming on a decline, guys, because those are fixed job roles, okay? There's nothing much to do over there, okay? So if you're a developer, or if you're into big data science, or if you're into machine learning, these are the growing fields at the moment. Okay, AI and all. Okay, the administration logos have been in a boom past 10 years ago. Okay, but today, in today's world, the booming field is cybersecurity, understanding threats and analyzing those threats and preventing those threats from happening. So people usually from administration job roles are shifting to cybersecurity. Okay, and uh, to get started in cybersecurity, CH is one of the best courses to go with. Um, Shoaib Ravi here. Hi, Ravi. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, so I would like to know about uh, this uh, CH certification and what will be the cost. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, let us say if I took a course from you, so later on stages, uh, can you help us on uh, resume preparation also? Great question. To answer that, Ravi, I can I help handle the certifications as well. CH certification is around five hundred dollars. Okay, but again, if you are from my reference, I can get you a certain discount, like around ten percent. I usually keep getting coupons and all. Okay, so there's a ten percent, fifteen percent discount or so. So at the time of writing the examination, you just contact me. Along with that, I give uh, again off the record. I keep giving uh, free proxy service as well. Okay, so if you this pass guarantee, complete pass guarantee, if you're planning on writing CH certification. If you're planning on writing, just let me know. You just give me a heads up before that. 
Secondly, yeah. after the course is done, uh, I will definitely give sample resumes. I'll explain you how to build your resume as well. Okay, so I'll help you out in that field as well once the course is done. Okay. Uh, because uh, I have around total of nine years of experience uh, in infrastructure. Okay, that's great. So I'm just thinking about changing into a different domain. So definitely, again, uh, to answer both your questions, Ravi, as I've mentioned, I'll help with the certifications as well. That's all in my hands. Not nothing to worry about that. And resume building. Once the course is done, I'll send sample resumes. I'll explain how to build your resume on that with your existing existing experience. And with this added a uh, knowledge of cyber security. Okay, so apart from these uh, Splunk and uh, other uh, tools uh, in Microsoft, or there are some other tools like Microsoft Defender and uh, other tools. So those uh, tools also will be covering in this course, or uh... Defender is just a uh, Microsoft proprietary anti malware tool. Really. Okay. So again, those will keep coming up once in a while in our topics. Okay, we'll discuss what Defender does or what basically any antivirus or any anti-malware does. But it's not a specific topic actually. Okay, so we'll be discussing on anti-malware. We'll be discussing on antiviruses and how they work. Okay, and just like you mentioned, Windows Defender will come across that as well. Okay, but it's not a specific topic actually. Just to be clear. Uh, because recent days I'm seeing that Microsoft Defender for emails, uh, for email also they are uh, started. Uh, yeah, again, yeah, with every single day there's better and better technologies to prevent cyber threats. So we'll be learning on the latest tools as well, definitely. Okay, so we'll learn how to prevent these threats. If not from Microsoft Defender, there's other tools as well. So I'll show you all the precautionary methods that are necessary to be implemented to prevent any kind of a cyber threat attack on your system or on your organization as well. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, uh, do you have any uh, training schedule apart from 8 p.m.? Uh, at the moment, no, Ravi. As far as I know, there's no other session running other than 8 p.m. But if something pops up, uh, the institute will definitely inform you. Okay, sure. Oh, sure. Thank you. No worries. Um, any other questions, guys? Any other queries or doubts? Definitely, Zakir. No issues. So you okay. said uh, there would be three more days of demo session, right? Or... Yeah, Rija. And the actual course will start from Thursday onwards. So the three days, it would be the same content or something else? Quite same content. But again, since there were interruptions in today's session, actually, just without any interruptions, I'll be taking the same demos on if possible, I'll try to include a few small, small practicals here and there. Nothing more. But more or less the same content. So if you're satisfied with today's class, you don't need to attend those three other sessions as well. You can directly join from Thursday. But if you think you have a few further questions or if some topic is not clear for you, you can join those sessions again. Okay. More or less whatever practicals I'll show in those demos, I'll be showing in them in the classes as well. So if you're satisfied with today's demo, you don't need to join those classes. Okay. But if there's any certain topic, which you feel like it's quite, uh, you need to clarify a few more doubts on that, you can join any one of these three classes. Upcoming sessions. Okay, right. Um, any other questions, guys? I'm so sorry for the technical difficulties today in the beginning of the session. Okay, so if there's any other, if there's some topic which you could not hear properly due to my audio issues, please do feel free to join the remaining three sessions as well. Anytime, any one of them. Okay. If not, if you're okay with the content that has been shared in today's class, you can directly join on Thursday. You can begin the classes from Thursday, on which day I will take the first concept of networking classes. Okay, so we'll learn IPv4 addresses, we'll learn public IPs, private IPs, uh, classes and IP addresses, and all that on Thursday session. Oh, Prasad, you're not audible. I can't hear you. You're not audible, Prasad. Guys, can anyone else hear Prasad's audio or is it just me who is uh, unable no, to hear? I can't. Oh, thank you. Um, Prasad, I'm not able to hear you. Your voice is not audible. You could ask your question or query in the chat box if it's okay.
Hello, Prasad, can you hear me? Any questions on your end? Okay, guys, I guess Prasad is EFK. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's it, guys. Nothing further for our session today. Uh, I would uh, like to end the session over here. If you have any queries or any other doubts, you have my number. I've shared the document already, the course content document, which contains my number for WhatsApp and calls as well. For any other query. The course Some background disturbance. Yeah, but if there's any queries regarding course payment or uh, fee regarding details, please contact the institute. Okay. Any queries regarding the technical parts of the demo or any other of these concepts, please feel free to contact directly. Not an issue at all. Okay. So yeah, that's it, guys. Nothing further for our session. Prasad, one last time. Any questions on your end? Hello, Madam. Yeah, I can hear you now, Prasad. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Ayub. So, like, uh, does uh, incident response covers in this course? No, no, no. Incident response and incident handling is not covered. That's a completely different course, Prasad. Okay. What about the forensic part? What about the what? Forensic. No, no, no. Forensics is also not covered. That's a completely different course. CHFI, Certified Hacking okay. and Forensics Investigator, is a completely different course. Advanced level course. None of the topics from forensics or none of the topics from instant handling will be covered in CH. Okay. Yeah, he has to either I'm from Vishakhapatnam itself. Right. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Nothing further. So, yeah, that's that. Um, no other questions, guys. Uh, I mean, I hope there are no other questions, guys. I'll exit the session. I'll have time permits. And if you feel... Uh, if some concept is not yet properly understood by you, please join the remaining demo sessions as well. Okay. If not, we'll be starting the class from Thursday itself. The first class will be on networking concepts on Thursday. I hope to see you then. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. And yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night. It was, a, it was great interacting with you all. Thank you. Have Bye. a good day.